Elena is, she's a first. It's like, oh, you're not ready for that? Oh, yes, you are. And I'm gonna show you why you're ready. She is leading not just the trans community, but she's opening people's minds up to something new that deserves love. I think she's going to be this beacon that demands respect for the trans community. So, how are you? I am on a whole new universe right now. Why? Because, I mean, look who's standing right in front of me. <laughs> like, a hero, an icon, Aww. a teacher, a mother, Aww. all those things. Well, I'm so excited to interview you. I've been studying you and following you and slipping in your DMs. Yes. Oh my God. And, and know that the life that you have now is not the life that you had before. So let's talk about that and how it led you to here. It all started in Chicago. On the south side, my dad was in the military. He met my mom in the Philippines, brought her to America, and they had me and they had my brother. And we dealt with a lot of homelessness when I was a child. My dad got into a lot of trauma with my mom. And at the time, he was being released from the service, and we were like homeless for a little bit um, in San Diego. Oceanside, California, where I used to be a Marine base. And we were just we were just trying to survive. I thought it was just like, that's how everyone was growing up. And then we just start moving around a lot. Were you in shelters or in the car? Sometimes or? we were on the beach. Oh, wow. Yeah, I remember one time we were like, he made a fire on the beach and we were like eating hot dogs. And I remember I dropped the hot dog on the beach and I was like, oh, I hope he doesn't see it because he doesn't like when I waste food. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it was, it was a lot. I think throughout my childhood, growing up on the south side of Chicago, I was just trying to like navigate myself and also deal with my own identity and talk about that. Talk about identity. Yeah. And being this young child and feeling like something's this this is not what it's supposed to be. I think my mom first noticed just this different energy, mm -hmm. very unique and just very feminine of light, of femininity mm -hmm. as a child, and she told that to my father. And she was deported when I was a child also. Mm -hmm. So before she left, she was just like, just protect this one. And did he protect you? He protected me. He did it. He didn't have like the information. He didn't know what to say. He just knew that I was his seed and he had to he had to just be the mother and the father. And would you say that is rare? I would say that's extremely, extremely rare, especially for black men coming up like in this world where they're also being you know, dealing with what black men and people of color deal with. It's just trying to survive, trying to just Homophobia in our in our community is really, really high. Yeah. Homophobia, racism, you know, um, this like masculine, like negative masculinity. And then here he is taking care of two kids and one of his children is like this ray of light. He just allowed me to express myself. When and did you know you were beautiful? I first felt I was beautiful was when I moved to New York City because I could actually like give myself a chance to love myself. Mm -hmm. Because in Chicago, we're not raised to just be beautiful. Mm -hmm. or... I was just looking and searching, you know, looking for movies and music and... Um... Was there anybody in entertainment? You. Oh. Oh. I already knew what you were gonna say, <laughs> you. I think when you, when your first season of Top Model, mm -hmm. when you just start giving us an insight of everyone from different walks of lives, mm -hmm. different body frames, all these powerful women. And then Isis, you know, mm -hmm. you were the first person ever to put someone that was of trans experience of color on a major show for everyone to see. That was a milestone for me to see what I could do. Mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to be in entertainment. I knew I wanted to be in fashion. I knew I wanted to do something. And you definitely helped a lot because mm -hmm. from the runway classes to just talk about body, to talk about what we could do outside of modeling, how mm -hmm. to use those platforms and how to walk into a room and speak to people. And I'm still learning to this day, but I feel like that was kind of like, okay, she's in New York City. She went to Paris. She's been around <laughs> the world. She's done Sports Illustrated. Why limit myself? Sports Illustrated. Yes. You're in Sports Illustrated. That's how I saw you. I saw this beautiful girl and I was like, I need to call her. She's gorgeous and I just feel something special. And I was like, here's my number. Yes. If there's ever anything you call me. So what did it feel like to get that call to be in Sport Illustrated and swim? I was honestly, I didn't imagine that it could possibly happen mm -hmm. in this time mm -hmm. 
for someone like me. I mean, mm -hmm. we're dealing with so many different things in the world and trans women are being killed every yes. single day, so murdered. Hate. Yeah, and to see that I've been chosen to, you know, to take on this responsibility and to really represent my community. Mm -hmm. It was something that was just, like I said, it was my wildest dreams, you know, and to just know that my body and how I move and what I do is being seen and like this is what we want to mm -hmm. talk about. This is the conversation we want to have and not just also my body but my mind. Mm -hmm. And I, they love it all. And they love it all. They love it all. Exactly. You know, there's something that you said that stuck out to me. You said you didn't think it would happen. You didn't, it's a wildest dream but almost not a dream because you don't think it would happen. You didn't dream of even being in the magazine because it's, you didn't think it would happen. It's just any right? magazine. Any magazine. Any magazine. There's so many other magazines that I feel like, oh, they'll never give me a chance or I'll never get that. And I've heard that. Mm -hmm. I've heard it from the industry. To be in this time, to have this moment, mm -hmm. to be in this moment with you, mm -hmm. it's just, it's, it allows me to dream differently. It allows me to say, what can we do with this moment? So Are, what do you think you can do with it? So you're in the magazine, I've seen the pictures, they're so beautiful. What's the next dream? The next dream is to make sure that I continue growing and learning and not just in front of the camera but also in every fiber of who I am. I want to get back into my education. I wanted to be able to be a symbol of knowledge and power. Obviously this magazine allows me to live today, tomorrow and forever. Yeah it does. But in order if you harness it right. Yes. It's handed to you right yes. You're in this magazine and so so many more people are going to know who you are yes. but what are you going to do with that? Right. Right? What are you going to do with that platform? Right. I think the mission right now and the mission with Sports Illustrated is to just open up a, a whole new idea and invite people, what MJ said, invite people to think differently. Yes. So uh, for me, it's just to continue bringing all these different intersections of being um, a Nigerian, Filipina, trans, woman on the south side of Chicago, who is mm -hmm. an activist, who is a dancer, who is a model, to bring all those together and just like show trans women to dream big yeah. and to go after their dreams. Imagine the kids yeah. yes. that are going to be looking at you in this magazine and being like, that's who I am. Yes and she is showing me who I am. Yeah. And she is showing me that I can be whatever the hell I want to be. We need be. that. We need that yeah. very badly. I needed that growing up, yeah. you know. I got fragments of it, I saw the inspiration, but to actually be in it to be the inspiration, that's a whole it's different. Major. It's a whole different, whole different experience, honestly. I think for me and for our trans women, yes, we can be beautiful, but we also have to have mind mm -hmm. and soul and passion for life mm -hmm. and I just want to continue speaking with people that are about changing the world with their mind and their heart. What would Lena be if she wasn't an actress and a model? What would she be? A school teacher. A school teacher? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well great. I want to do it all. I was afraid to go to school because there was no representation of me in yeah. school. I want to be able to look at my teacher and see a drag queen, see a trans woman, learn anatomy from a trans woman. I think I, that's where we're headed and this is what I could do with this platform is to make sure the next generation, now and tomorrow, have representation in all walks of life, especially in the educational system where we're learning. Well, you can be a teacher. I'm a teacher. Yes. I teach at yes, Stanford Business know. School. I know. So you can teach her. Yes, I, that's yes. what I want to do. Now I want you to talk to Little Lena, I want you to talk to that little precious pumpkin that was about to face a really tough world. What do you want to say to Little Lena? I want to tell Little Lena that it's all inside you. You gotta go in there and find it. And then once you go there, go deeper. Love every part of that journey of figuring out who you are. And what do you say to, to the Little Lena of the people that were nasty to Little Lena and hateful to Little Lena? How do you tell that Lena to deal with that? I would just tell her every person that's put in your life is supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. it, it, the good and the bad, it builds an armor, mm -hmm. a beautiful armor for you to go out in the world and you need to see both because mm -hmm. you know that the world has both. Mm -hmm. So accept it all and know that with all that, there's some change to be made and you could do that. Mm -hmm. So I just would say, just keep going. I don't regret those moments. I embrace them. They make you stronger. They make you, make you so stronger. Make you be able to handle anything, right? It's like, oh, you think your little teasing is gonna get me down? That is nothing. Oh, you think your little hate with your yeah. thumbs behind your little computer is gonna get me down? Oh, that is nothing. It, and it will never stop. I just mm -hmm. gotta keep believing in myself and yeah. keep going. And what I was brought here for is to be a vessel of change. Mm -hmm. Any person that comes inside my life, 
they are seeing something that's already inside them. You know what I mean? We are all connected in so many ways. And you know the people that are first, I always say they get the bumps and the bruises and the scrapes because you were going through that jungle and you were cutting through all the vines oh, and the, the bruises, thorns, baby. right? And the pain and the nastiness and the negativity and that hate. But what you're doing is you're pounding through that jungle, you're clearing the path yes. for the people behind you. Exactly. So they don't gotta go through it. Mm -hmm. And people that are watching this, you know, they need to understand that this right here is the future. Mm -hmm. This is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. So just get ready. You know, sometimes it's so hard for people to understand change and different and uniqueness and black and trans. And yes. They're just like, what is that? Right. We are all children. We are all human beings. Right. And it's so interesting that people put up this veil and say, you're over here, we're over here. And as right. you say, we, we, we're, we're all the same. We are. Yeah. We just honestly, I think the more that we have people like us in the world mm -hmm. that are having these conversations, that are daring to go out and to have the courage to talk about mm -hmm. this, the more that we can see representation everywhere yes. around the globe. And that's when we really understand true love mm -hmm. and the brotherhood and the sisterhood that we are all a part of outside our last name. Mm -hmm. So I just think it's so powerful to have that community. I wish for the day where diversity and inclusivity is, we're like, what are those words? Right. Mean? It's prehistoric. It's, yeah, it's historic. <laughs> do you remember back in the day? Lena, do you remember? When Whoopi, oh, oh, ladies, Lena, yeah. do you remember that diversity inclusion thing? And it was, it was a thing, and now it's just normal, and we don't even know what those words are. And we need to understand that right now, and that's one thing I always remember as a child, like standing there watching TV, in Chicago, clicking it, I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna do this. I had to realize that it was all just temporarily. Mm -hmm. Like in a few months, in a few years, things are gonna be moving. Yeah. I just gotta keep dreaming. I gotta keep moving. Mm -hmm. I gotta keep seeing the world, mm -hmm. keep involving and inspiring people to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So it's just a gift that keeps on giving. And what about you do people not know? Something about you that they have no idea. Um, I'm a super nerd, like I collect comic books. I'm really into oh. X-Men, really into like my favorite X-Men is Mystique because she can transform into anyone. Is that the blue skin? Yes. Fellow supermodel Rebecca Romaine yes, was on the friend. cover of SI. She yes. actually yes. was Mystique. Exactly. Yeah, that was, oh, she did a great job. Yeah. But yeah, I just, I, I'm a super like down to earth introvert. Like when I'm at home, I'm collecting like old X-Men comics yeah. and I have like my Mystique action figures and yeah, that's what people don't yeah. know about me. This is the beginning for you. I am so happy that you are in this magazine. So many people are gonna open up this magazine and they're going to see you. And I remember I started Sports Illustrated on the inside of the magazine. And one day I was on that cover. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if we're gonna get there in your lifetime of you being on the cover, yes. but it's a nice thing to dream. Yeah. And maybe one day, Maybe one day I'll be sitting here interviewing you and you'll be on that cover. But yeah. right now you're on the inside. Yeah, and, and I'm happy I'm happy to just be there. I'm yeah. happy to just be in the room. Mm -hmm. I'm happy just to have the conversation with the people that we can just open a dialogue yeah. to see where the world can change into and knowing that every person that's part of that process have the power to do that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what it's all about. Yeah. We just have to just show up. What about seeing me on that cover? What did that mean to you when you saw me on the cover? I saw a beautiful body, I saw personality, I saw a big smile, I saw a woman on a beach and I direly wanted to be that girl on a beach. At the time, I, I couldn't go to the beach. I, I was just body dysphoria. When I just saw a woman that just was this black queen just laughing and loving and just being the elements around her. Well, I see a black Filipina queen. Yes. And a queen that deserves a crown. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Ah! Oh my god! Oh my god, is that my cover? It's your cover! <laughs> Oh my god. <gasps>
I, like I said, this is what I came here to do. I came here to really just represent my community, to be a representation that I want to see in the world. And this exemplifies this moment. This it's bigger than you. Yes. When I was on the cover of SI, it's bigger than me. Yes. It didn't just mean, oh, Tyra was on the cover. It meant a black woman yes. was on this cover. That black is beautiful, that a black girl can be the girl next door. And this is that a black Filipina yes. trans girl can be the girl next door, yes. can be sexy and is beautiful. And, and the world is going to see oh this and God. celebrate this. I can't. All of you. <laughs> <laughs>